all of the fossils that you show in that video clip of yours, guess what? They're all in sedimentary material that was rapidly da laid down by cataclysmic action, you see. Hello, baby! Welcome to Michigan, Neff. Neff, have you ever looked at a geologic map of Michigan? Silly question. Of course you haven't. You've never looked at any geologic map. And you probably wouldn't be able to read it even if you did. Now, that's kind of peculiar looking, isn't it, Neff? Looks a bit like a bullseye. Well, let's take a closer look by looking at the rocks in cross-section. Wow, look at that. It's a sedimentary basin that's over 4,000 meters thick. My goodness, how in the world did all that sediment get laid down over a few days? Must be that hydroplate theory of yours. Now, what was it, Neff, that you said about how sedimentary rocks are formed? In case you don't understand how strata are formed, they're formed because the heavier material settles first and the lighter material forms on top of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, Neff, let's, uh, let's test your ideas here a little bit. Let's zoom in on the stratigraphy of the Michigan Basin and see how your ideas match up with reality. Uh-oh, we've got a problem already, Neff. Down near the bottom there, it looks like we got some limestones and dolomites and, oh no, some evaporites. How did that happen? Well, we'll get back to that in a minute. Up here in the middle, that brown rock you see, that's shale. And those are very, very fine sediment. Kind of produced from mud. And above that is some coarser grain sandstone. And on top of the sandstone are these really coarse rocks that geologists think were laid down as glacial till. That doesn't seem to comport well with your model of sedimentary rock deposition, Neff. By the way, you see all those squiggly lines, hun? Those are unconformities, areas where at some time in the past, the rocks were exposed for a while to erosion. That doesn't seem to comport with your flood model either, does it? Well, there appears to be no end of difficulty with your model of sedimentary rock deposition in the flood, Neff. Mm -mm -mm. Now, about those evaporites. Do you know how evaporites form, Neff? Not surprisingly, with a name like evaporites, these rocks are formed through the process of evaporation. They usually happen in relatively isolated basins with not a great deal of flow through the system. There's water flowing in, but not a great deal flowing out. There's a high evaporation rate, and they most commonly happen in climates that are very, very dry, like the area around the Great Salt Lake. Now, these things can be lakes, or they can form in certain oceanic coastal environments. There have been very large lakes in the geologic past that eventually dried up completely, leaving behind vast salt deposits like the Nevada Salt Flats here. In some very hot, very dry environments, calcium sulfate is produced in the form of gypsum and anhydrite. Salt, gypsum, and anhydrite are all found within the rocks of the Michigan Basin. And so, along with the many erosional unconformities within the Michigan Basin rocks, Neff, the evaporites seem to present an insurmountable problem for your flood ideas. Oh man, is there no end to your pain? What's this strange dolomite structure here? My goodness, what can it be? Oh, crap! It appears to be a coral reef. Now, how in the world could a coral reef have had time to form in the midst of the Noachian deluge? Alrighty, my little honey nut cluster. That's a few of the problems with your flood model, courtesy of the state of Michigan. And I'll say in closing that the number of simple facts about the sedimentary rock record that people like you have to ignore is simply astonishing. See, you're not a thinker. 